Okay. Now, I wanted to share this uh, Aboriginal flood legend um, that's recorded here by a man by the name of Howard Coates. There are many of these, I told you, 270 plus civilizations, some say it's 400, have ancient stories that had a flood involved in a, 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 a flood, a devastating flood or worldwide flood or something similar. <clears throat> and I wanted to uh, go over the Aboriginal flood legend with you. It is the worldwide existence of traditional stories such as this one from the Australian Aboriginals, which provides evidence that the common ancestor of today's races was Noah. <clears throat> this is an old time story told by the earliest profoundly knowledgeable elders, said Mickey Bungunny, an old man from the Wanambal Aborigine tribe, Western Australia. In those ancient days, uh, Gahara was still a human creature living along with his wife and with his sons who themselves were also married. It came about that the earliest time children living in those far off days mocked, tormented, and ill-treated the winking owl, Dumby. They plucked out his feathers, they spat on him, they pierced him many times through with grass spears, even thrusting a hole through his nasal septum. Up into the air they tossed him, jeering at him, now fly, but he fell down to the ground with a thud. This they did again and again, and Dumby thudded to the ground. A third time those children threw him up in the air, but this time Dumby continued to go up and up through the clouds out of sight and right on up to the Engaja, the Supreme One. What's happened to you, asked Engaja, the Supreme Being. What have they done to you? The owl then presented his complaint to him, saying the children mocked me, they held me in ridicule, and persecuted me. And Nadja, the Supreme One, was inwardly grieved. Remember how Elohim said, I, uh, I felt I was sorry that I created them all. So you get, there's a, lots of phrases and pieces of this that are almost identical to the account in Scripture. And felt deep sorry for him so that he gathered his followers together and held a council with them. Among the many followers of Engadja gathered to this council meeting were uh, Magar Magaraguri, the sidewinder lizard, Windurijal, another kind of lizard, the eel, the freshwater turtle, and the black goanna. Go, said uh, got, uh, Nadja, see where these people are, peer over the range, see if they're still camping in the same area, then come and tell me. This, this he said to his followers, he was truly sorry that these children had mocked Dumby. The first one to be sent was Mag um, Maguriguri, he the quick-legged one ran to the place called Dumby, which is the range that lies across the country in that place. On returning, he reported that they were all still there. Ngaja sent him again, saying, go again to the same place, see if they're still there. And Maguri Guri went to spy once more and returned again with the same report to Ngaja. Ngaja, the supreme being, then instructed Gahara, who at that time was still a man, saying, if you want to live... Take your wife, your sons, and your sons' wives and get a double raft. Because of the Dumby affair, I intend to drown everyone. I'm about to send rain and a sea flood. <laughs> so a couple, their three sons, and their three sons' wives. Put on the raft long-lasting foods that may be stored, he told him. Foods such as gummy, banimba, and ngalinja. All these ground foods, so Gahara gathered all these foods. He also gathered birds of the air, such as the cuckoo, the mistletoe eater, the rainbow bird, the helmeted friar bird, and finches, those he took on the raft, and also a female kangaroo. And Gaja then said, all is ready now. He thereupon sent Maguriguri to peep at the people for the last time. Ah, the lizard said, gesturing in their direction. They all remain on one place. And Gahara gathered his sons as the crew and his own wife and his son's wives together. And Gaja, the Supreme One, then gave Gahara some of his own foods. And, and Gaja sent the rain clouds down, shutting the clouds in upon them. The sea flood came in from the north, northeast, and the people were closed in by the saltwater flood and the tidal waters of the sea. The flood began to sweep all the living creatures together and pushing them all along to one place, Dumby. Here the, wor the waters were spinning in a whirlpool, and all the people were screaming as they looked for a way of escape. And Gaja whirled the flood waters, and the earth opened, drowning and flattening them all. He finished them at Dumby. 
Meanwhile, the flood carried all those who were on the raft with Gahara along with the current far away to Dulugan, where the world ends and the waters flow over. That's where the flood had been taking him all the time, the place of the dead, where there is no land. The waters were rolling him this way and that way and spinning him around for a long, long time. At last, however, the flood waters brought Gahara back in this direction. He sent some birds out from the raft. <laughs> First a cuckoo. The cuckoo found the land and did not return to him. Gradually, the waters were going down. The first land that Gahara sighted was the hilltop at Ingubinji, which is Doubtful Bay. Oh, he said, I found a hill. And he was glad within himself. Then, as the waters continued to go down, he sighted Numbazare, Mount Waterloo. Later on, the other birds returned to Gahara, and he sent them out again the following day. They arrived on the land and met Dumby, the owl, who said, Oh, you've returned already, and they invited them up to stay. The land was already drying the waters up. The living creatures found a home and, a fo and food. Soon, in many places, the owls were breeding. As the flood subsided, Gahara noticed that he was leaving a watermark like a painting along the hills. This is the flood spirit line left where the, the flood made it. The waters were taking him past M Manduli when he bumped into a rock. <clears throat> Manduli is the tomahawk place where they used to get stone for tomahawks. Gahara was where they uh, was bumped off the raft with a splash and sank into the bottom. On the bottom of the sea, he walked to the shore of the mainland. His sons and his wife paddled the raft towards the shore where they met him. His sons wailed for him, crying, Father has come out to us with a lot of heavy seaweed and oysters all over him. They said among themselves, they removed some of the oysters, prizing them off and threw the lump of seaweed into a heap. The heap turned into a lump of rock where it remains a monument to this day. Sounds like Lot's wife. The Wingina spirit went out into the cave where he is painted. I want to turn off here, he said. So he turned off, and for this reason, the, the place is called the turnoff place. He went into the cave and lay down. The hornets were numerous down in that cave. We do not touch it. It's taboo. That is, the Gahara cave is taboo. With regard to the kangaroo, which they had taken on, uh, with them on the raft, which was still with them when Gahara went down and forced his way through the sea and came out on the shore, they killed it after landing, and Gahara's wife, uh, Gal Galbiri, put it in the earth oven and cooked it with the other foods. The smoke rose slowly until it reached through into the sky. And Gaja, the supreme being, said, Oh, what is that smell? Ah, they're cooking a good kangaroo. The marrow smells, I could smell the odor. He could smell the steam and smoke rising from the female kangaroo as it was cooking, and he was pleased. In Gaja, the supreme being put the rainbow in the sky to keep the rain clouds back. The rainbow lies bent across the sky. He ties up the clouds behind it, and the rain does not come. The rainbow keeps the clouds back and protects us so that the rainfall does not rise too high. Our people understand the significance of it. When they see the rainbow, we say, there will not be ab any abnormally heavy rain. And when, when the ark lands, <laughs> Genesis 8, starting at verse 20, Noah built an altar to Yahweh and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And Yahweh smelled the soothing aroma. And Yahweh said to himself, I will never again curse the ground on account of man. For the intent of man's heart is evil from his youth, and I'll never again destroy every living thing as I've done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Isn't that interesting? From the sacrifice, the offerings, to the animals on the raft, to the couple with their three sons and their wives, to the confusing Lot's wife thing in there, <laughs> turned into a pillar of salt. It's there to this day, they said back then, uh, just, uh, yeah, the, the offerings at the end that the Father smells, uh, wow. That's ancient Aboriginal flood legend. Oh, so close to the account in Scripture. I wonder where they got it from.